What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about a few good places to get vegetation for your models, so things like trees and bushes and that kind of thing. Um, before we get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. So the SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I put together um, because I wanted to offer more in-depth training in SketchUp. So I wanted to create a course that was a little bit more comprehensive. Um, that would cover more topics, so kind of the, kind of the amount of information that you usually get from taking like a two-day training for SketchUp. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to get some more in-depth SketchUp training, that's available for pre-order right now um, at 40% off. So make sure to check out that link at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, I wanted to talk about some of the options available to you for uh, getting trees and other things to add into your model. Um, so a lot of the time you need trees is kind of a background to go around a model that you have or um, you, you're just looking to there's a lot of different reasons that you're gonna want that in your model and so there's a few different places to go looking um, for those models and so the first thing you need to figure out is if you want to create a photorealistic rendering or if you're trying to create something that's a little more diagrammatic or kind of stylized because that's going to affect the kind of things that you want in your model so the first thing the first place you can look for vegetation is obviously the 3d warehouse so and to get to that you're just going to go to file 3d warehouse get models and what you can do when you get to the 3d warehouse is you can search for whatever you're looking for so in this case I'm gonna do a search for 3d trees and so you can see this already pulls up a whole bunch of different options in here and the first thing you need to figure out um, even before you do that search is if you want to use two-dimensional um, trees or if you want to use three-dimensional trees because there's a lot of 2d trees out there that you can use um, that are kind of face me components that work pretty good as long as you're not doing a photorealistic rendering but um, so there's all these different trees in here and you can go through these but one of the things you need to be aware of is you need to be aware of how big the models that you're downloading are so um, if you if you look at all these models um, you can see how when you mouse over them them, you can see how big they are so like when I mouse over this one for example you can see how the file size is 941 kilobytes and this is a pretty good one and I'm gonna bring it into my model in a minute um, but if you look at some of these other trees like this 3d tree right here that's a 14 megabyte file and so while that may be very detailed it's gonna slow your model down a whole bunch so you have to have kind of an idea of the way that these things are constructed as well as just kind of the general size so let's go ahead and I'm doing this 3d tree and I'm gonna download this 3d trees by flame and so I'm gonna click on this and this is gonna bring up the information about this model so you can see how when I bring this model in um, this gives me information on the number of polygons the SketchUp file size all of that so I can just click on this download this model option and it's gonna ask me if I want to load this directly into my SketchUp model and I'm gonna say yes and so I can bring this into my into my model and you can see how it's basically constructed of some branches that are made of actual geometry and then it's got a whole bunch of like flat leaves and they're a little bit choppy around the edges which again it's really going to depend on what you're trying to do if that's okay for you or not um, so like for example I'm just going to run this in InScape real quick um, InScape is a real time 3D rendering program and we'll just see how it looks and in general um, stuff like this can look pretty good um, the one thing I would like is a little bit better kind of cutouts of these leaves but if you look in InScape if I fly around this these trees look pretty good they're casting shadows um, if you kind of zoom out a little bit they look fairly realistic I mean obviously they're not perfect and they're not the most amazing thing in the world but you could scatter these across your model and they would do really good for just kind of like a background image type trees that sort of thing and so one thing that I recommend when working with trees in the 3d warehouse is if you find something that you like um, go ahead and create a collection for it so if you go to the 3d warehouse and you go to get models there's an option in each one of these for add to collection and so if you click on this and you go to add to collection then you can create a 
you can create a collection for trees and vegetation that you can go in and you can open up. So if you look at the, I believe it's in the My 3D Warehouse, if you look in your collections, this trees and vegetation that I created is now going to have that model in it. And one thing to note is a good place to start with this is I'm going to look for 2D plants SketchUp. So I'm going to do a quick search for that and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for the plants collections from SketchUp. So these are usually a pretty good place to start. If you do a search, you do 2D plants and you look under collections, then you can open this and this is going to have a whole bunch of like two dimensional in this case, these are plan view. These are plan view trees, but SketchUp's made a whole bunch of uh, different stuff available. So maybe if I do 3D plants, SketchUp, then maybe their collection for that will come up if I search for collections. But if you see anything from SketchUp, generally what that's going to indicate, they may not be the highest resolution things in the world, but they've probably been modeled with smart modeling practices, and they probably won't just kill your SketchUp models when you bring them in. So like for example, you can see how this Trees 3D 2015 is in here, and you've got a whole bunch of different options or things that you can bring in. Once you find that, I would go ahead and add that to your collection as well. So not only can you add models you can also add collections to your collections but now I can come back and I can find this really easily so I could bring in like this spruce tree and you can see how this has actually been modeled with geometry in SketchUp so the 3D warehouse is a great place to find some plants and some trees that'll work okay in your models. Um, option two is there's actually an extension called LobWork um, and apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong but that's basically an extension out of Germany that you can use to generate more detailed trees and so that's an extension that you can install and I'll link to this in the notes down below you can actually find this on Ronan Beckerman's uh, uh, store page so he's he's the developer behind scatter which we'll talk about in just a second but um, I'll link to this in the notes down below but you can see how the plants kits and that kind of thing from lob work have a cost associated with them but if you scroll down here to the plants kit freebie you can download this for free and try it out and so you just click on this and you just follow through and you can donate in here as well so if you decide you want to give a couple bucks for this then uh, you can put a number in here and you can go ahead and pay for that but in either case you can download that file and you can run it and what that'll do is that'll install an extension what that'll do is that'll install an extension in SketchUp that you can use to bring trees into your model. And so if you click on this, this is going to give you several different options for different trees that you can bring in. So you can see how I've got some options for a pine tree, a maple tree, and these are all available in the free version. I think there's one, two, three, four, five different options. But you can go ahead and you can click on one of those. Like let's say I clicked on this maple and then I can click in my model to bring it in. And the first thing you're going to notice is obviously these trees do not look anything like these trees. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is that SketchUp doesn't always handle the geometry that gets brought into the with trees very well because they're very high polygon. It's a lot of stuff it has to render. Well, what this extension does is this extension allows you to edit the properties of these trees and then the trees themselves only show up when you render them. So for right now, SketchUp displays these as proxy objects. And so what does that mean? So the first thing is once you bring these into your model, you can edit their options using the plant attribute editor. And so if you look at this, if I click on each one of these, it's gonna allow me to edit the attributes of whatever component I have selected. And these all get brought in as components. So like for example, if I made a copy of this tree right here, these are both copies of the same component. And so if I edit one, it'll edit the other as well. But you've got all these different options in here for um, like the season of the tree, or you can also change like the variant. So you can change those so that they're young trees or fully grown trees. And you can see how these proxy objects are changing in size to kind of indicate it, indicate that. 
and so you've got a couple different variants in here and like for example if you wanted one of these to be different than the others you could just make it a unique component so you could just right click on this and click make unique and then so you could you could adjust these separately basically so you can see how you've got these kind of different options in here. Um, you can adjust uh, your leaf amount, you can adjust the quality, you can adjust all those different things. And you can also look and see how many polygons and also other information is gonna be associated with this. So if you look at this, for example, it's a 16.7 megabyte um, item. So this one says that it's a 227 megabyte item. And so the, the thing with that is SketchUp couldn't even display this if it wanted to. So if you even wanted to try to display this, it wouldn't work. And so I'll show you what this does though, is now that I've got these trees in here, you can use an extension like V-Ray or um, I have a Thayer Render trial that I'm gonna use to just kind of show the way this works. But you can basically bring this in and you can just click the render button and you can render this and it's going to take a second because there's a lot of geometry in here that it's working with but basically what this is doing is this is rendering these trees as if they're actual geometry so you can see how these are all laid out the same as these proxy objects are in here um, but they're not actually having to generate all this geometry within SketchUp. So you can see how you can use this to kind of fill in the background of your models without making them super heavy. So this is a really cool extension for trees and that kind of thing. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is there's another great option for this, which is Scatter. And Scatter, as you guys know, I've talked about this a little bit in the past. I'll link to some tutorials about it. Scatter is basically an extension that's designed to help you randomly scatter things across your model. And so the way that the scatter option is going to work is you can launch scatter and what it asks for is you give it like a group or a face for it to scatter things along. So in this case, I'm gonna pick this surface. And then what I can do is there's actually a built-in library of things that Scatter can, already has that work well for that work well for landscapes and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna take these trees, for example. So I'm gonna click on this folder and then I'm gonna click on this trees option. It's gonna ask me a few things. So it's gonna ask if I wanna load this as full geometry, which I do not recommend, proxies or billboards. So billboards would bring in like a 2D view of these trees. In this case, I'm just gonna do a proxy. And so if I load the proxy and I check the box for render only, then it's not really gonna give me a preview of where everything is in here. So you're gonna to wanna to check this box for live preview. So when you click live preview, what this does is this gives you an idea of where it's scattering all of these different options or objects. And so you can see what it's doing is it's taking these three objects and it's kind of randomly scattering them. And right now this is set up as kind of a uniform thing. I'm gonna go ahead and set this as random and I'm gonna bring my items per unit way down because you can see how right now it's previewing 282,000 objects, which is obviously way too many. So I'm gonna bring my items per unit down to 0 0.001 and hit the enter key. So that brought my tree number way down. So you can see how now these are all in here and it's and you can adjust um, the randomness of the size and the rotation and everything else in this extension. But it's got all of these objects in here and I've got kind of a live preview. Well, the cool thing about this, and I'm gonna go back to Enscape for this one, is when I bring this into Enscape, it's actually gonna generate the trees in place of those proxy objects. So you can see how as I zoom in, one of the other cool things about Enscape, by the way, is you can apply a grass texture and it'll actually render this as grass. You probably would need to extend this out a little bit um, in order to really get everything kind of showing up. But you can see how all of those proxy objects that are getting brought in are getting rendered as trees within Enscape. And so it's really fast and it's really easy. I never had to deal with tree geometry within SketchUp. Um, these are just kind of in here. So you could use this to scatter things around um, like buildings and kind of make a forest, that kind of thing. You can see how these trees are all a little bit small. So you could adjust these up so they were a little bit taller, but you can see how easy that was when using scatter. 
so I'm, I'm really impressed with the way this works. Um, in, in the past, I've had a little bit of problems with scatter, I think because I was really using it wrong. Um, so I always kind of tried to generate the geometry in here to see what everything looked like. And that's just not the right way to do it. But when you do something like this, it's just so easy to generate all of this tree geometry. So um, you can check out more about scatter in the links down below. All right, and then the last option I want to talk about is I want to talk about the, the ability to add um, trees and shrubs and that kind of thing within Photoshop itself. So if you come over to Photoshop, this is an image that I exported out of Inkscape just as kind of an example. But um, basically, within within Photoshop, if you create a new layer, and we'll just call this tree, but if you create a new layer in Photoshop, and I did a control shift in in order to create that new layer, but if you go up to filter, render, tree, you can actually generate trees and shrubs within Photoshop to add to your model. So if you wanna just kinda of export this out without having to deal with, um, without having to deal with figuring out trees and that kind of thing you can add them in later on so like for example there's a whole bunch of different tree types in here so you can do like a young maple tree um, but you can adjust like the amount of leaves in here and the size of the leaves and you can basically customize whatever you want within Photoshop so you can see how I can bring that in and then once I kinda like that I can bring that in and I'm just going to move that And I've been using the scale tool in order to do that, and I kind of map that to the Control S key, um, just to kind of keep it close to what I do in SketchUp. But you can see how you can bring this in over to the side, and if you wanted to, you could kind of scale it off to the side so it shows without you having to deal with having to put like the tree trunk in and kind of merge anything like that. But you can kind of add that in, and then uh, go ahead and click OK, and then we'll go ahead and add another layer. So just Control Shift in, and we'll call this Shrub. And what we'll do is we'll add another tree. Whoops. But not that one. So we'll go to filter, render, tree. And there's also options in here for like little shrubs. So if you scroll down and it is, we'll go to number 21, which is a shrub. You can adjust shrubs in here as well. And we're just going to go ahead and click OK. And again, I'm just going to use the scale tool to kind of drop this in. And I'm going to scale it down. And I'm going to put one of these kind of in front of this window over here and then once I do that I'm just gonna duplicate that layer and we'll just kinda of move it along the way here and you do have to be a little bit careful about um, your perspective and that sort of thing when you're working in Photoshop but um, we're just gonna kinda of try to get it close so we'll duplicate these layers again move those even further down then you can see as I zoom out once I kinda of get that in here and obviously there'd have to be some kind of planner or something like that but we'll go ahead and leave it as is for right now um, just for the sake of this um, this discussion but you can see how you can add these in to your renderings and your objects after the fact as post-processing items so that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Um, do you have some places that you go to get trees and shrubs for your SketchUp models? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So please make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.